Pastor Tina Heise bringing you the devotional for Saturday, March 9th. This is the second station of the cross, and I am reading from the Gospel of Mark, the 14th chapter, verses 43 through 46, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. When Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came with a mob carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests, legal experts, and elders. His betrayer had been given a sign. Arrest the man I kiss, and I will take him away under guard. As soon as he got there, Judas said to Jesus, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. The word of the Lord. So imagine this scene, if you will. It's Saturday night, and you and your friends have spent a lovely evening playing games, having snacks, enjoying a few glasses of wine. And as you're helping your host clean up in the kitchen, she confides in you that the real reason why her husband wasn't there this evening was not because he was stuck at work, like she had previously said. He's actually moved out of the house and is now living with a girl who is his coworker and half your age. You offer support to your friend and you vow to see her through this challenging season of her life. You say to her, whatever you and the kids need, I'm here for you, I've got your back, you can count on me. Then you and your carpool buddy make your goodbyes and as soon as the car pulls out of the driveway and onto the road, you turn to your new friend and tell him about the scandal occurring within your host's family. A few weeks later, the host of the game night calls you up. She and her husband have decided to give couples counseling a try, but she needs someone to watch the kids. The new season of This Is Us is due to prepare, premiere that same evening on the TV, and so you tell your friends, oh, geez, I'd love to help, but I've got this unbreakable commitment that evening. Call me another time. A few more months have passed. Counseling has not saved your friend's marriage. She's filed for divorce and is drowning in lawyers' bills. You invite her to a charity event that you, the two of you have gone to every year, and she says, I really wish I could go, but money is really tight this year. I can't really afford a ticket. You tell her, no problem, there's always next year, and you never offer, offer to cover her cost. What does it mean for us to betray our friends? As we approach today's station of the cross where Judas betrays Jesus, it's pretty clear that, Jesus, that Judas is wrong. Handing your friend over to an angry guard for a few coins clearly violates friendship. There's a phrase that you might have heard that says, death comes by a thousand cuts. Whenever we betray our friends by telling their secrets, ignoring their financial struggles, and refusing to help when asked, we live into that Judas side of our nature. We betray our friendships cut by cut, leading to destruction as surely as Judas's preference for money led to Jesus's destruction. The Eighth Commandment tells us not to bear false witness against our neighbor. And in the small catechism, Luther reminds us that we bear false witness every time we gossip, slander, or, and this is hard to hear, don't come into the defense of our neighbor. When we fail to protect our friendships, we are breaking the Eighth Commandment. Judas broke the Eighth Commandment that day in the garden. This Lent, as we think about this station of the cross, God calls us to reflect upon the ways we are like Judas in our friendships when we betray those who trust in us. Let us pray. Loving and faithful God, you have claimed us as your own and you call us friend. Help us to deny the temptation to be like Judas and break the eighth commandment. Help us to discern how we can come to the defense of our neighbor Thank you for giving us and for loving us, even when we fail in our friendships. In your holy name we pray. Amen.